Good morning, and welcome to Daylight with Dean, number 76, on June 26th, 2020. Today is Friday, the beginning of the weekend, and for many of us, a well-deserved weekend it is. like to open our time together with my daily first sip of coffee. Wow, that is enough to brighten your morning for sure. Uh, yesterday, I shared with you the exhilarating adventure of the day before. I left out half the details and half of the events because uh, I'd have to change the names to protect the innocent, but it was, it was a wild ride. So at the end of daylight yesterday, I just simply uh, asked for a boring day. And I can't say that I had a boring day, but it was a good day. It was a really, really good day. I uh, worked on the message quite a bit yesterday and really looking forward to the service that we're having on Sunday morning, our first live service back in the building on Sunday, June 28th. I'm going to be preaching the message uh, online as well, so I'll be preaching this afternoon and recording it for our online service that we will continue to do because we have found that a lot of people who have never uh, come to the river before are connecting with us online. And also we have a lot of people that are not coming back just yet because of all that's going on and they will continue to enjoy the service online as well so we have filming that today and then uh, I will be preaching it Sunday morning so looking forward to all that did want to put a shout out if anyone is available this sun this Saturday morning at 8 a.m. not not uh, 7 a.m. like last week or two weeks ago, but at 8 a.m. we have a smaller tent to put up. It takes about 20 minutes with a handful of people, and it's um, a very easy tent to put up. We've put it up several times, but we do need a few people to help with that. So want to get about uh, seven, eight, ten people together to just help get some final things out and up and ready to go from the tent up to some uh, chairs up. We're not setting out chairs, but we're going to have chairs available in case somebody did not bring uh, bring their own. We're encouraging everybody to bring their own. Uh, got to paint the social distance circles in the yard on Saturday um, and just have, just have a, a lot to get done. So uh, if anybody's out there and has a little time, an hour or two Saturday morning, I would love to have you join us at 8 a.m. to help us set up uh, some stuff. Thank you. So um, this morning is one of those mornings that uh, I've kind of feared the entire time I've been on daylight. Uh, I went back through my text messages last night, and whenever I have an idea for daylight, whenever I have something I want to share, I text it to myself and I, I sent one uh, two days ago, the day that I had locked the keys in the car. And it was funny because I wrote in the text message how I locked the keys in the car. And I thought that would be a great thing to talk about for daylight. Little did I know what would happen at 7 p.m. with my daughter locking the keys in her car up in Clarion and all that ensued there that I shared yesterday. So um, the, the thing that I feared is that I would uh, come on daylight and really not have anything scripted. Um, you know, this is a fairly unscripted experience. I get up, I get my coffee, I take a couple sips of it, 
and then I just share what's on my heart. And I told you before that on the days that I preach and leading up to them, I am just have a little bit more anxiety in my spirit, a little more um, uh, angst, just, I don't know, I, I, I think... Okay, so that's what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I, I think it's just part of feeling um, that I just can't do this. Um, that I just can't preach, that I can't communicate something worthwhile for people to hear. And um, that's, that's an uneasy place to spend a lot of time living in kind of your fears, living in your anxiety. It's, it's amazing how it just zaps life, uh, zaps life out of, out of me. When I was, when I was a, a young guy in high school, um, my mother knew that I had felt a calling to be a pastor on some level. And when I was in about 10th grade, she called our pastor at our church and said, um, Dean feels kind of led to be a pastor and we don't have any like pastors that he's in the family with it, he can just know what that's like. So would it be okay if I brought him to the church today and he just shadowed you all day in what you do? And so Pastor Sheldon Moore, just a gracious, gracious man, I really uh, loved God, loved others, um, was a good communicator, just a, just a gentle, great man. He uh, took me for the day. <laughs> it's kind of like a Mr. Rogers field trip. And we went to the hospital to visit somebody. I believe we went to lunch and over lunch had a conversation. And he said, you know, Dean, it's really an odd thing. He said, it's just, just such an odd thing how preaching works and, and being in ministry he said, when you, when you put your sermon together, man, the sermons that uh, I'm so confident in heading into, and the sermons, I don't know he said it that way, what he, what he specifically said was, when you're done preaching and you feel like you have just knocked it out of the park and people are saying goodbye to you, it's it's interesting. Often I'll just get yeah, it was okay. Yeah, thanks. It was you know, when I press my wife about it later on, she'll say, Yeah, it was it was okay. Not anything wrong with it. It was okay. Good message. And then he said, Those times when you preach and you feel like you're committing a crime against preaching because it's so bad. And you feel like when you're done, all you want to do is crawl under a rock. You want to go hide because you know it's just so bad. He said, those are, those are the days. Those are the Sundays when people are like, oh, my pastor, you have no idea how helpful that was to me. You have no idea how badly I needed to hear that. Man, that blessed me. I, you know. And I thought, well, that's awfully, uh, yeah, I was 15. I didn't know anything. I just thought that sounded strange, you know. But wouldn't you know, man, he's exactly right. You know, those Sundays when, when I, you know, feel like I've done a great job, um, 
sometimes this feedback on those Sundays are just kind of like, yeah, it was, it was good. Thanks. Yeah. And then the Sundays, oh man, I, I remember them. They're horrifying. I mean, that's a horrifying experience when you preach a sermon. You're like, that was not good. Though that those words should never have come out of my mouth that way. What what was I thinking putting that message together that way? It's it's like in those moments, um, God steps in and says, "Don't worry, I got this one. <laughs> I I got I got this." Um, reminds me a little bit of the story in Scripture when Jesus was teaching and. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people gathered to hear him teach. And he called the disciples while he was teaching and said, hey, uh, we got to feed all these people. And they're like, there ain't no way. <laughs> and he says, well, go see what you can find. And the one disciple came back and said, well, I got this kid. I was going to steal his lunch from him, but I thought I'd just bring him and show him to you. That's a Dean War translation as well. And he's got... Like five loaves and two fish, or two loaves and five fish. I think he had five loaves and two fish, if I remember the story correctly. And Jesus said, that'll do, that'll do. And he brought his little lunch, gave it to Jesus, and Jesus blessed it, and it fed <laughs> thousands of people with baskets left over and I, I think it's interesting how when we're doing our best but we just run out <laughs> and all we just show up with is ourselves willing you know, God whatever you want I'm here use me how you see fit what I'm bringing isn't that much. It's not that impressive. Um, it's in, in those moments that he steps in and uses it. I may have shared this early on. Um, but I remember when I first felt, when I, not, when I was wrestling through that angst of, am I going to be a preacher or am I not? Am I going to be a pastor or am I not? And talking to Steve Childs, my pastor friend, about it. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for pastors, and they all seemed like experts to me. And then I had some that I just didn't see myself being able to follow in their footsteps and how they did ministry. And I, I just remember wrestling with, I don't, I don't think I can do this. I don't, I don't have anything to add. I don't have anything to give. Like, when you're in college, they teach you to preach real intellectual sermons. And I'm, I'm not a real, you know, cranial guy. Maybe that statement just proved that. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, my intellect, uh, I have many other great, uh, great features. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not captivated and, um, you know, just all about the intellectual I'm more about the heart and the life and um, and so and following and all of that but I just remember I I, I, I can't preach super intellectual sermons I, I mean I'm not stupid but I, I can't you know and I, I just remember telling like I remember like well what would I even preach about what would I even talk about like I, I can't I knew I didn't know anything like how would I how would I give and so I told Steve, I said, I just, I don't have anything to give. I don't, I don't have anything to, to, to offer. Hmm. And, uh. Steve just looked at me and goes, you have, you have no idea. You have no idea. And it wasn't what I now know. It's not about me. At, and then w when we reach that place of, I, I don't have anything to give, but my willingness to give and my availability 
God, do, do with it what you want. It's in those moments that the Holy Spirit has a lot of room to work. So, I want to invite you, if you're at the place in your life where you're feeling like, I got nothing. I've made a mess of things. I've got nothing. I'm so focused on my career. I've got nothing. I'm so focused on my family. I've, I've got nothing to give to the Lord um, that would bless others, that would help others in any way. I think I think that's the place the Lord wants us to get to when we just say, Okay, God, what I got, it's it's yours. Do what you want to do. Just it's yours. And I'll trust and I'll follow. I'm scared to death, but I give it to you. And when you do that it's like the loaves and fishes, man. The Lord takes that little bit and does exactly what he wants to do. And he is good. He can be trusted. You can place your life and your future in his hands. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are a good God. I thank you that your faithfulness in my life has played out over and over and over again and that I don't have to live in fear. I thank you, Lord, that you call all of us to follow you and to serve you. You don't call all of us to serve you with our occupation but you call all of us to serve you with our lives and in our occupation. And for those of us who are trying to sift that out and figure that out, I pray, Lord, that you would help us find and move toward that. And Lord, I pray that you would take the little bit that we have, that you have entrusted to us, and when we give it to you, that you would take it and steward it well for us, that you would multiply it, that you would bless it, and that you would use us to bless others. And Father, as I speak your word today and record the sermon and again on Sunday in person at the river, I pray, Lord, that I wouldn't say what I'm supposed to say. I pray that I would pray, say what your spirit moves me to say and what you have for me to say. Father, thank you for your love and your faithfulness and your goodness, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here with my little bit today and uh, just letting it go for the Lord, whatever he wants. <sighs> Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye. See you tomorrow.